Surprise, surprise, surprise. Another short talk. Lightning talk, yes. Uh, please welcome Anfa. One, two, three. Is it okay? Right. Sweet. Hey, I'm Anfa. Good to see you again on Sonoy. I think we're coming back with a bang. N Nils did an excellent job of bringing this event back. And I'm really happy to be here with you. And yeah, I didn't do a presentation like I did for the last past three years. But I feel like uh, others have like uh, got the torch and are doing amazing talks. And I see a lot of musicians, performing musicians, coming here and showing how they perform, which is just excellent. I'm really happy to see that. What I want to show you today is a bit different. It's open hardware. Um, it's headphones made by a company called Ploopy. Kind of funny name. Intentionally funny. Looking for the HDMI cable. Let's see if this works. One moment, please. Unfortunately, this is not a recording, so I can't um, pause. Yep. I never did that on XFC. Oh, here we go. Cool and good. I'm not going to be talking about bespoke synth today. Uh, even though I would love to, maybe next year. <laughs> um, what I have is Ploopy headphones. Uh, these are 3D printed headphones, which, like, um, full disclosure, I was given them for free from by the company so that I would make a video about them. But they didn't tell me what I want to say, so I wouldn't let them anyway. Uh, yeah, and these are made in Canada. They're 3D printed. You can assemble them and disassemble them. Uh, all the documentation for like putting them together is available. This is both open hardware and open software because these headphones come with their own preamplifier slash uh, digital audio converter. So they are open back headphones. When you put them in, put them on, uh, you generally hear the same stuff you, you hear when you don't have them on your head, which is excellent for listening to music in a quiet environment, not so excellent for <laughs> traveling with them or, you know. So that's a specific use case. Now they come with uh, this little amplifier box, which has a Raspberry Pi microcontroller, not a full Raspberry Pi. More like the Raspberry Pi Nano thing, I think. Pico, yes. Thanks. And they overclocked it twice, <laughs> like two times overclocked. Uh, it gets a little bit hot. But they managed to put here a 15-band fully parametric equalizer. Actually, in a firmware update, it's 20 bands now. And so how these work is they require this specific amplifier because it gives like, I don't know, 10 volts, and they are 25 ohms. It's a very like specific thing. But the most important thing is the EQ, because how they achieve a good frequency response is partially through the design, which is 3D printed, and they have like tiny resonators in them that help tame a large peak in the mid-size, which is a natural resonance for like the the drivers, 
and the drivers in here are planner, which is like the high fidelity thing that you know people pay a thousand bucks or more for. There are some options that are way cheaper, but um, that's pretty new. And these are like um, one hundred eighty dollars US. Um, didn't didn't calculate the euro thing. So you can also buy them twice cheaper as a complete DIY kit. So you get all the parts and you also get the PCB <laughs> and all the components. You need to solder them by, on your own and assemble this. So it's not something I would want to do because I would be afraid I mess it up. But if you are you know, tech savvy, you can get these headphones way cheaper. If you are feel confident, you can put this together. Uh, they have very good um, illustrated instructions on their website. Which I'm not going to show you, but I want to show you the software that uh, exists to configure the, these headphones. So this is called the Ploopy Headphones Toolbox. Right now, uh, they are not connected. So we have a pair of cables which go individually in the front. And it seems kind of weird, but when I wear them, I don't really feel any, any issue with the, them being at the front. Like, yeah, pretty sweet. One issue I have is uh, the cable came twisted, like the two cables came twisted together. And there is a, a rubber clamp stop here that you know gives you this uh, space where they don't twist. But I think they really need a second one here. I didn't have it. Now I just you just used a little bit of wire that you know usually you use to store cables with. And I didn't use this, and the connectors got a little bit bent, and I started hearing some buzzing. So. If you get them, I advise you to uh, fix this so you remove the tension, the twisting tension from this. So we have individual cables for left and right ear. The interesting thing is these are stereo jacks. So each headphone receives uh, like three lanes, three pins. I don't know exactly why, but I guess it's the special requirements of the platter magnetic drivers. <laughs> oh yeah, it could be symmetric, so... Yeah, that's pretty crazy, because you know, this removes any tiny bit of uh, electromagnetic interference you could catch on the cable, which is short, and also seems well insulated, so it's like... Uh, for my not excellent ears, it's probably way overkill. I'm very not qualified to like rate audiophile headphones, and the word audiophile is kind of cursed, because you know there's all the audio foolery going around, and you know golden power cables and golden uh, Ethernet cables that makes your your YouTube sound pristine, ex excellent stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Because uh, how else you're gonna get the uh, packets to really like arrive untouched? So they come with all this, and they come with a USB-C cable if you select it when you order it. Because you can, you may, if you have enough of them, you you can not. I I ask them to give me one, but this is not the one they shipped with me. They shipped, they give me a much longer one and uh, with an like a nice um, wrap. So. It's a nicer cable. This is from a launch pad. <laughs> so when you connect them, if you connect them right away, nothing happens. Because Linux, unlike Windows, doesn't let random software just uh, talk to your USB devices arbitrarily uh, on a low level. On Windows, it just works. But on Linux, you need to add a UDEV rule. But this is all described in the readme on GitHub uh, for this project's um, 
for this project. So it's just one, a one-liner, you run it with sudo, uh, you run the program again, it's distributed in various forms. One of them is app image, which is, I think, a really good thing, because this works on everything. Just, yeah, <laughs> which is how I can get it onto AV Linux, which uh, is quite conservative about um, the software is, that is available and certainly doesn't have this in repositories. And I, yeah, I want to try to keep the, the AV Linux installation as stable as possible. Right, so when you connect them, they are detected and mm, you have control over pretty much everything. I'm going to mm, change the window a little bit to help you see better because uh, you probably will have trouble seeing it at the bottom of the projector. Everybody sees the bottom? The blue line? So that's the frequency response of the EQ processing. And as you can see, by default, it's quite uh, not, not flat. Actually, I think it's... I think I have mismatched the version of the firmware on the amp versus the version of the software, because um, yeah, that's another topic. But this EQ curve is uh, crucial to get a good uh, response out of these headphones. So if you use them with a different u audio interface, um, you will need to somehow equalize the signal or you'll get a very raw uh, and uneven response. But after the, the, the EQ, um, a guy called Oratory1990, who is like professionally like developing headphone drivers and analyzing headphones for manufacturers and tuning them, like that kind of stuff. He produced the EQ curve that brings these to like 98 uh, percent of the of a specific reference curve that is uh, called like the ideal frequency response for headphones, which was created by Harman and someone. Uh, based on like a lot of market research and headphones. So it's like, in short, these are 93% perfect <laughs> when it comes to frequency response. Uh, so you have all the filters here. You can tweak uh, them. There's, uh, you know, general peak filters, shelving filters, high pass, low pass. You can add more filters. And it's pretty crazy because the types are, yeah, you have band pass skirt, band pass peak, you have notch, you have all pass, if you have going to mess with the phase, and you even have a custom IIR filter where you can input uh, custom coefficients. And there is a warning, do not mess with these coefficients while you are listening to your headphones. It will get loud. Yeah, do this before you before you change numbers, or you may lose your hearing. Uh, yeah, so the cool thing is you can customize this. So for example, if you're a bass junkie, you can take the low shelf. I'm going to remove this IIR, custom IIR filter. You can take the low shelf, which is, I think, second from the top. Yes. And you can just up the gain a little bit. And you can see the curve is normalized. And now I relatively have much less highs and mid-range than bass. Like they, and these go ridiculously low into the <laughs> bass. Like the bass is absolutely huge on them. And I'd love to, you to try it. Uh, I have a little like bes bespoke track that I think utilizes that bass potential. They're really dancing on your head, but in a pleasant way. Uh, if you don't want it, it's, it's not going to do that. You can EQ it. And the cool thing is you can save this EQ and uh, also preamp settings and in this box, and then you can just take it with you. Anything that has USB, it just shows up as an uh, as an audio device. And you don't need this toolbox to like use them. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, any questions? I think you need to turn it on. There's a red button. Test. Oh no, it's on. Okay. Um, so, 
Hi. Um, Hi. As far as latency concer is concerned, because the um, Pico, the, the RP2040 is not really a specialized DSP or any of that, but, um, but you're adding a lot of um, custom filters to it. Um, like how, um, how's the latency with the, with the amount of processing going on? Could you, could you, have you measured it or is it, is it, bear, is it okay, is it bearable? I haven't measured it, but they feel like there is no DSP going on. Like, I don't feel any latency. So, yeah, I did produce a track with them, um, made, synthesized, mixed it, and it felt great. Honestly, I like, feel like, um, I don't know, we go into the fuzzy sound descriptions, but, yeah. and I never really used these words, because I'm not into like, super high fidelity stuff where, you know, you get the golden power cables. But I would, also, I never used for a long time open back headphones. So it could be just that the nature of open back headphones is the higher like stereo field kind of. And I f seem to like hear a little bit more detail and, um, and it feels like I can, it removes a bit of haze into what I'm listening. And I think the mix came out pretty okay. No, no feeling of latency anywhere. Okay. Is it? Oh, yeah. So first of all, did I get this right? One hundred eighty dollars for this whole headphone. Yeah. With the planar uh, driver system. Yes. In comparison to, for let's say, manufacturers like Odyssey or Dan Clark Audio, where you have to pay three to five thousand uh, uh, dollars uh, for such a headphone, uh, how is the sound quality compared to uh, other headphones that you have uh, uh, used? I haven't used any other planar magnetic drivers. Yeah, but any any, dyna any dynamic headphone that you have uh, used in the past. I think they sound at least very good. I didn't like have any any issues. They sound very clean to me. I really like the the bass response that mm -hmm. it can it can be very deep and powerful. Yeah, okay. There is one issue, mm -hmm. and that is with loudness. They can't go very loud because mm -hmm. you run into um, a limitation with the amplifier. And they've alleviated it a little bit in a firmware update, mm -hmm. which I have installed here, but not <laughs> in this version of the toolbox. Mm -hmm. So in the newest, I think it's still like in beta, so. In the newest version, we have two preamp settings. Right now here is the preamp. This is gain before applying the EQ, mm -hmm. which means that the EQ curve can clip. Mm -hmm. And this setting that is, uh, it is at default, I think, yeah, I think this used to be in decibels. Maybe this is just a different version. Mm -hmm. um, the defaults are like made so it's um, conservative. So we have quite a bit of headroom for messing around with the EQ. But if you mm -hmm. go very crazy, you will clip. You will clip the DAC, the digital audio converter, because the samples will just go to one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I can, you can turn them up a little bit with the preamp if you don't mess with the EQ. But then, still, if I play music that is properly mastered and is like reasonably loud, it's not an issue. But if I listen to like YouTube videos which are not loudness normalized to like, you know, negative 20 laughs or negative 14, I can't get them super loud and it's like, that's a that's a negative. Then I like boost here, and then something else plays, and it distorts. So that's a that's a one complaint I have with them. Uh, I know the company like acknowledges that and looks for ways to fix that. But yeah, for now that's a limitation. So I was talking to them and hey, maybe we can integrate a limiter <laughs> into this box. But I don't know if it will be able to handle that much of processing. It's really uh, a small mm -hmm. microcontroller. Okay, got a uh, last question. Uh, the drivers, where are they manufactured? Are they coming from Canada or elsewhere? I think, I think they order them 
uh, they don't manufacture the, the drivers. They order them in bulk. I don't know from where. Uh, didn't read up on that. Oh, okay. I would assume maybe China. I don't know who makes them, and I don't know who makes them um, well. I have no idea. Didn't look into mm -hmm. this. Yeah, okay. Didn't look into the supply chain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I would have to ask them. They have a, a Discord server. Unfortunately, Discord is a proprietary technology. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, but they also have GitHub, so we can ask there, I think. Um, and they're very responsive and... Yeah, just really cool guys. There's like two people running the company and they've started doing like truck, po truck balls and mice and keyboards, also 3D printed, also open source, very hackable. And the headphones is like uh, the, the newest thing they kind of put out. But they've worked on them for like two years, I think. Um, yeah, also a uh, basic question. Um, given that the preamp and the codec are basically in the same box, like is it, uh, I see it's like mostly meant to just be plugged into your computer. Um, um, is it recommended or would there be like a way to just plug it into my mixer? Um, or would I just not use the, the small box and just plug the balance cables sort of and uh, mm. to, to like the uh, uh, master output or something. I think, I think you could, yeah. but you would be missing the very important EQ equalization. Yeah. And but I tried like with disabled EQ and they sound very, very mid heavy. I believe. And like totally not balanced out of the box uh, if you don't have the EQ. So this is quite essential. And um, like they were asking for ideas to improve the amplifier. And one thing I suggested is uh, an auxiliary analog input. Yes. So you could just plug any audio, like you could take audio from your mixer, plug it in here, it will then get digitized, processed, undigitized again and sent to the headphones. Of course, the extra, you know, digitization, digitalization step would add some latency, but I guess this all is, you know, in the sub 10 milliseconds. So I guess that would be reasonable. Yeah, but that's uh, up to a future revision and, yeah. The chip inside, mm -hmm. the DAC, it has both like <laughs> digital to audio and audio to digital. So you could use the same chip to process, uh, to get input, even for either from aux or like add a microphone and have this become a headset, a USB headset and not just headphones. Uh, these are all options on the table. It's like not available but these are hackable open source you can like uh, talk to the to the guys who who design them and make them and maybe help them help steer them in the in the right direction um maybe like another small question then um is it possible to order everything but the 3d printed parts if i want to just print it myself i haven't seen such an option but i'm sure if you talk to them they'll figure something out for you yep. uh, i know they sell like a separate kit with all the foam and like textile elements uh, because these will probably perish after some years of usage. Thankfully, there is no, you know, like this fake leather coating that starts to peel off and you look like you have black dandruff. What the heck? Uh, every single pair of headphones I ever had did that. These won't, but. Um, they are also open back, so they don't try to like block any sound. And that fake letter is there to block sound, I think. When it peels off, the headphones become more open. <laughs> Feature, not a bug. Uh, regarding uh, the last question uh, about driving them without the preamp, I think you could just uh, make an IR of the of the response and use it. Uh you know, at the end of your chain before going into your mixer or something like that. That could work, I guess, right? Yeah, I think you could like bake the EQ into, um, into an impulse response and then use a convolver to just stamp it on and have it done and have the, the signal headphone ready. I was talking to them if it would be possible to like implement the EQ as a convolver. So we would have pretty much unlimited bands of EQ because it would be 
pre-processed, baked into an IR, but um, the chip is not optimized for such heavy calculations and there would be like millions of multiplications per second of audios, this would not work. <laughs> um, I, I was wondering, what is the impedance of the, of the headphones? What, what is what, the what impedance is it? Impedance? Yeah. I believe there are 25 ohms. 25 ohms. And um, last question, uh, I'm not familiar with, is it Raspberry Pi Pico you said or something like that? It's so, like 20 something, 2040, microchip 2040. Uh, they have this all listed on their website. But, Maybe I'll open but it. my question actually was um, like, how hackable would that be? Like, is, is it running a, a full stack Linux or could you run other software on that? Or and it's not running a full Linux. It's a, it's a microcontroller. It's okay. not a system on a chip. All right. Okay. That's not it. This is not what is running here. This is not an ARM processor. This is a microcontroller. Yes, ARM, ARM makes microcontrollers. Ah, okay. I thought it's running the ARM architecture. I don't know. This is some Raspberry Pi th chip. Yes, we can hmm? Can this, this is not a discussion point. We can just yeah. use ARM with Yeah. <laughs> I have to watch the time a bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for this um, bonus content. Uh, yeah, thanks.